Hey folks, today I want to talk real quick about a kind of book that always has my interest when it comes to getting inspiration for science fiction and fantasy. And it's a type of book that I call a visual resource book, which is a pretentious way of saying it's a photo book or it's an art book. But this particular book is of great interest to me because it combines two of my big fascinations, one of them being Japan and the other being how things are made. And the book's entitled How to Wrap Five Eggs. And the subtitle is Traditional Japanese Packaging. And the fascinating thing about the book is that the vast majority of the techniques and the designs and the materials that are used and, and displayed in this book are still in wide use today in Japan, as they were created by and handed down by artisans um, from father to son or from uh, mother to daughter. They're still very much in wide use. And so a lot of what is described in this book is basically a living art. And as the title implies, it's not just about eggs. As you can see, this is how five eggs would be wrapped using nothing but bamboo. But it also covers a great many other kinds of things that are being packaged and a great many other packaging types. So just briefly flipping through it, I noticed uh, packaging like baskets, serving trays and dishes, packaging for consumables like fish and miso paste or jam and confections, stoneware, uh, wrapping cloths or furoshiki as they're called in Japan. Those are an art form unto themselves. Single serving items using things like leaves, buckets. The list goes on and on and almost all of them involve things that are going to be readily available to just about anyone in any country. Natural materials, straw, bark, wood, paper, leaves, things like that. Now one drawback to the book, my one big complaint about it despite the fact that it's, it's wonderfully photographed and also heavily annotated, is that none of these things are described in terms of their step-by-step -step creation or assembly. That said, the explanations in the back of the book do give a lot of context for what these things are, and that can in turn spur some research on your own part to figure out how they might be made. If I ever do find a book that goes into step-by-step -step detail about how things like this are made, you can bet I'm going to be recommending and talking about it. I've noticed that Japanese publishers have a lot of books that consist of illustrated guides in great detail to a lot of very uh, granular subjects from Japanese history and culture. So I may be picking up more of those as I go and unpacking them for, uh, for further inspiration. So another nice thing is that if there's some particular craft in the book that intrigues you, like stoneware or pottery, you can jump off and investigate that further on your own. Now, a big part of why I wanted to talk about this book on this channel is because of the way that a lot of what's depicted in it can be tied back into fantasy and science fiction settings pretty directly. In fantasy settings, we have a lot of emphasis on things being made by hand with natural materials, and here are some classic examples of how to do exactly that. Or in science fiction, you have the whole solar pump category where there's this renewed emphasis on artisanry and renewable resources. So a book like this would be a great inspiration for how details for things in those kinds of worlds could be filled in using real life examples. So the book is available um, as a paperback relatively cheaply, I think about $29 on Amazon. There is no digital edition, unfortunately, but for something like this, you really want the, the experience of the physical edition anyway. So in the future, I'm gonna be covering uh, many more graphic resources like this for the sake of science fiction and fantasy. If this has intrigued you, go ahead and pick it up, check it out. I hope it gives you something to think about too. See you around.